two one e bienvenido a pal world let's see if we can put a pal world server on a synology nas so first we're gonna go we don't need to start on pal world's homepage because i don't think they have an official i don't think they have an official guide on how to install pal world using docker so instead i'm gonna google pal world docker server and i'm looking for this guy which is thej van loaf pal world server docker which i'm really sorry that i can't pronounce that because you guys are doing an excellent job all 44 contributors so you should see it here it's got 2000 stars and we're just going to scroll down and we're looking for a section called docker compose and this is what we need to host a pal world server on a synology nas so just two notes real quick so you don't waste your time first uh, if we scroll up here yes you can only use this on the steam version of pal world so if you're using the xbox game pass version you're not going to be able to use this yet i think they're working on it but that doesn't work right now and i don't i don't think you can even get an invite code to invite people who are using it so you and all your buddies might have to pony up 30 bucks to buy the steam version is my that is my understanding and second of all is there are some server requirements i would just say you should have at least four gigs of ram if you're going to try and run this eight or 16 is probably ideal especially if you're going to have a lot of players you could i my guess is that you could get away with four gigs of ram if you have four to five ish people so let's go to the Docker Compose section. I'm just gonna copy this block of text and then head back to my Synology NAS. So you just need one program on here and that is Container Manager, which if you don't have, just head over to the Package Center, type in Container Manager. I really butchered that one. Container Manager. There we go, that was accurate. And you can click on it and install. If it's not showing up in the Package Center for you, that means that Container Manager is not officially supported for your model of Synology NAS, but Google around and you might be able to get it to work. So I'm gonna click on Container Manager and then Project. Now I'm gonna create a new project and I'm gonna call this guy Power World, but you can call it whatever you want. I don't really care. So for path, we're gonna make a folder where all of the server files are gonna live. So this will be all your Docker. This is everything that Docker is gonna need, but also all of the server files. So if you wanna back it up, this is where you're gonna do that as well as, I think this is where you'd also put Power World mods. So let's go into file station and then you should have a docker share if you have installed container manager and i'm gonna click create folder i'm just gonna call this guy power world again you can name it whatever you want but i'm gonna stick with power world all right i'm gonna scoot this over because i will need it so back in project i'm going to set path and just use that docker sorry use that power world folder we just created so select power world for source i'm not gonna upload i'm creating a docker compose.yaml which is just a text file and that text is gonna be that text that we copied from the server GitHub, which I did not try and pronounce the name again because I'm really bad at it. Also not good at reading. In here, we just need to make a few changes. So if we scroll down, there's a section called environment. And this will be one of the easier Docker. This is, a, this is one of the easier Docker installs, luckily. The, the team did a really great job on this. So we need to update PUID and PGID. These are just ID numbers of your Synology's user. And this avoids Docker containers from running themselves as root. So we can get these. It's actually really easy. I'm going to go to control panel, task scheduler, and then I'm going to delete this. You can see I've done this a couple times. I'm just going to create a scheduled task, user defined script, and I'm going to call this task get ID two because I already have a get ID and I don't feel like deleting two of them for the video, even though that would have taken less time than me explaining it. And then I'm going to uncheck enabled, and then I'm going to go to task settings. Down here, you can see a section called run command and user defined script. I'm going to click in here and type in ID base greater than sign. I think that's what it's called space. And then I just need, I'm just going to make a text file that has all this stuff. So I need a location to put that. I'm going to click on file station, right click my Docker share properties, and then I'm going to copy that location. You don't have to do that. You can put it wherever you want. That is where I'm going to put it. And then I'm going to type in forward slash. So I'll paste the location in there, forward slash, and I'm just going to type in id.txt. You can name this whatever.txt you want though. And I will click K and then you can see it here. I just have to click this run button. Are you sure? Yeah, I am sure. Click OK. Thank you, task scheduler. And then I will exit out of control panel. Now, if I go back into file station and click on my Docker share, if you're already in it, make sure you click out and then back in. Check it out. You've got an id.txt. So you've got your UID here. So mine is 1028. And the GID is 100. Yours is probably also 100, but that, that is in here. Yep, GID 100. If you're wondering what I just did, it's actually very simple. If you were to SSH into your Synology NAS, which is kind of how you just use command line and you type in ID, don't that look familiar? Yeah, so it's just making it, it's just running that command and then making it into a text file for you. And that way, if it's in your Docker folder, you'll always know where it is.
Let's see here, any other changes? So you do need to make a server password. So I'm going to type in volume data 23 because nobody will be able to guess that. So if someone does enter my game, I'll know that you told them because only you and me know that password. Multi-threading, true. So there's a lot of options here that you can change. I'm just gonna go over some of the basic ones. TZ is short for time zone. So I'm gonna type in America, new underscore York because that is my time zone. You can also type in Chicago, Los underscore Angeles. You could do Europe, far slash London. There's a whole Wikipedia that's got the correct way of writing these time zones. I don't know that it's mission critical that you get that correct though. Admin password, you just need to make a secure password. So I'll just go to Bitwarden123. I It was on password, but I made a passphrase because if I'm gonna do a password, then I'm gonna have to type in a lot. Probably easier to do passphrase. So I will paste in a secure password. I don't even know if I know how to spell blasphemy without this. All right, community, you could set that true if you want people to be able to discover your server over the internet. Server name, I'll type in volume 21's server. And then server description, I will type in a lengthy YouTube tutorial server. All right, the last portion here, there's a section called volumes. So this is just asking for a folder. So you'll see it's basically folder location, colon, folder location. So the way that this works, the folder location of the right of this colon is for Docker. You don't gotta worry about that for this tutorial. So you leave that as is, don't change it, don't rename it. The Docker container needs that folder named as it is. But to the left, we can do whatever we want here. So in this case, right now, it's looking for a folder called Pal World in the folder that this text file is gonna exist in, this Docker Compose YAML. So that Docker Compose YAML is going to exist in this Pal World folder because that's the folder that we set the path to. So I can just create a folder called Pal World in here and I'm good. I've got that folder and we can launch it from here. I think it's a little confusing to have a Pal World folder inside of a Pal World folder. <coughs> Sorry, cough bark. I'm actually just gonna rename this to data and I'm gonna rename this folder to data. They have to be the same exact name. Both of these have to match up. You don't have to do that step. So I'm probably just confusing you more than you need to, but that's how I wanna do this. If I click next, I'm not gonna set up a web portal via station. I'll click next and then I will start the project once it is created and that will launch our Pal World server. So I'll click done. A couple of things to note here. I hate using the word things. So it's gonna just extract, pull, and download everything. And once it's done, we're gonna get a message that says error, that says exit, not error, exit code zero, and then that our project was successfully created. But that doesn't mean that the server is up. That just means that the project is going. It's probably gonna take like 10 to 15 minutes for the server to actually be up and running. So just know that going into it, don't freak out if it's not working out immediately. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Close out of here. And then the other thing to note is, yeah, there's a couple of things that you can do here since we're running this in Docker. I can go to the container. So the project is basically just what we did. You can check out some statistics and the YAML configurations. If you wanted to edit this YAML file, you'll do it in project. But if we click on container, this is more of the, uh, this is the meat of the project here. So you can see Power World Server is the container. If I double click here, I can check out the log and see everything that it's doing. So you can continually check back and forth here and see when it might be done. Although it's not a very clear message when it's done. Other nice thing though, is that you can adjust settings. So if I stop this container, I'll get a message that it's been stopped. I could change the name of it if I want, but more importantly, I can enable system resource limitations. So if you don't want it to use up a lot of CPU, you can do that. And if you want to adjust how much memory, like the maximum amount of memory you want this container to use, that's also in here. You can also enable auto restart. So if you turn off your server and turn it back on, this will make sure that the Powell server automatically turns on the next time that you, uh, next time that you have to reboot your Synology NAS. Otherwise you might have to do it manually. Although if I go to project, I'm not gonna save that. Project, Power World, YAML configurations. Sometimes they put it in here. Yeah, so restart on less stop. So it might automatically restart anyways, but I just wanted to let you know that that exists. So I'm gonna click start again because I need the server to start up. So kind of important, you might wonder, how do I even access the server? And that's also pretty simple. All you need to do is when you're in Pal World, you're gonna type in the IP address of your Synology NAS, colon 8211. If you don't know the IP address of your Synology NAS, very easy, you can just come up to the top right, there's a section called widgets. Make sure that system health is checked and you should have an IP address. So it's probably 192.168.1. something. It's not gonna be the same as mine. If that's not showing up here, you can click on LAN and check the different LAN ports and see if, see if one of those is it. I think the LAN that it's showing is dependent on which port you actually connected it to physically on your Synology NAS. So might not be LAN one, but that is your IP address. So you would just come into Power World, click on join multiplayer game, which this option will not be here if you're using the Xbox version. So I'll join multiplayer version. And then down on the bottom, this is where you can enter that IP address. So in my case, mine was 192.168.86.60. 
and you want to keep colon 8211, that is the port. And since our server uses a password, I will also have to enter password. I'll click connect, it'll ask me to enter, enter a password, and that is how I would get into the Power World server. You probably have a different question though, and that is, how would I get my friends to access this server? So the way that that works to get into your server, that's only gonna work locally. If you want your friends to access your server, you should look into downloading something like Tailscale. You basically need a VPN and your friends can download Tailscale and they can VPN on your server. It's in the official, it's in the official Synology uh, package center. That would be the safest and more secure way to do it. If you're looking for the, I'm gonna say easier and probably less secure, and a lot of people probably won't recommend this online way of doing it, but easiest way of doing it is to just type in, go to Google, type in what's my IP address. You can give your friends that IP address, they'll type that in, and then they'll also type in colon 8211, and that will bring them to your server. You will also have to open up port 8211 on your firewall, so you'll have to figure out how to access your router, get into the firewall settings, forward port 8 211 to your Synology NAS. And if you're using a Synology NAS firewall, you need to make sure that port 8211 is accessible to people as well. So that's how you would do that. I think also when you're port forwarding, it's, it should be UDP. So I don't think you need TCP. Anyways, that is how you would get a Powell server up and running on your Synology NAS. Yeah. Look around too if you're interested in doing something like if you're going to open up ports on your firewall and stuff, look into that a little bit, see if it's for you see if it's really a secure thing for you or not. For some people, it's I think it's fine, but for some people, there's a big security risk when doing that. Also, you're allowing the entire world to get on your server, so you should definitely be using a password, and you should also make sure you have a strong admin password. You might also want to make sure that community is set to false. The other thing I wanted to go into was in, if we go back to Container Manager, Project, Power World. I'm gonna double click Power World and click on YAML configurations. You can still make updates to this. So if I go to that GitHub page, I believe they have a whole section on environment. They're called environmental variables. So here you can actually add and change some of these if you wanted to. So for example, auto update enabled. Currently it is false. So if I wanted to enable auto updates, I can copy this, copy what's to the left here under this section called, let me just make sure I got this right. The section you're looking for is called environment variables. I guess it's not environmental, just environment. So let's say I wanted to enable auto update. I would copy that. I would go into my Synology NAS and under YAML configurations, after the last one, I'm just gonna hit space. I need to make sure my server is stopped. I wonder if my server even launched the, I wonder if it even managed to launch the Power World server. So make sure that your server is stopped. Just make sure it's formatted exactly the same as the other environment variables. So I'll do hyphen space auto update enabled and I'll type in equal signs and I will type in true. So that, right, that should be the way of doing it. Yeah, because basically what this says is what the variable is, what it does, what it's defaulted at, and then what your options are. So in this case, I can type in true or false. You might not want to update, enable auto updates just because because um, that can screw with things. It might update and break something and you didn't want it to do that. So just be warned about auto updates. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in here that you can that you can check out. I'm gonna exit out of here. Don't save. If I go to File Station, Docker, and click into Power World and Data, you can see all your stuff is here. So here are all your files. Since you're running a Power World server and your friends or family or whoever's using this might be reliant on you, I would look into snapshots, snapshot, snapshot replication that can basically make backups of your server on the hard drive or, or sorry, on your Synology NAS. And I would also look into hyper backup. If you've never done this before, hyper backup, you can actually back your server up to something like Google Drive or Dropbox. So that way, if there was a storm or something happened to your Synology NAS and the server went, if, if your server went kaput, at least that backup file is somewhere. Or if somebody, if you accidentally deleted it, got formatted, a hard drive died, you never know. Hyper backup is your way of getting these files off of your NAS and somewhere in the cloud. So Synology, one of the great things about Synology is it offers a lot of good backup options. So there you go. You've got a Power World server on your Synology NAS. Good luck to you.